Hey, welcome back to Wax On Studio. I was working over there before, now I'm working over here. Um, so today, my task, the task ahead of me is to um, finish up these, uh, the waxing of the second layer of these shirts. So what you're looking at is long sleeve shirts. And last week, I did the first layer of them. So here, the first layer. What I did is I used a janting tool to apply the border and then I used a metal stamp that I made um, to do these little those six, seven, eight designs there. Okay, so that's what it looks like the first layer and then I painted I went from turquoise to alpine blue and then I added a little yellow in the corners to make green um, and let the dye cure and now it's totally totally dry so it's time to wax over it this is why I named my company wax on because putting the wax on was always the part that I was the most excited about I'm not super excited right now because right here in front of me is the hot wax and it is stinky today I use pure beeswax and I put a little bit of paraffin in it to get the right amount of crackle and um, I haven't been in the studio much this week and so it's just been sitting here with uh, <laughs> with a lid on it um, and just getting stinky it smells like too hot wax so be glad that you can't smell it we're gonna hang out and I'm just sort of gonna talk about the process so this is the design that I came up with what do you think I after the first waxing um, I used a couple different tools I used this guy wait did I use that one nope that's too big I didn't use that at all there it is I used this one, this cookie cutter here, which was a circle, but I used needle nose pliers to bend it into shape. So that goes there, that's where I stamped, and then I've got the littler one uh, to make the shape in the middle. And then everything else is paintbrushes. In front of me here, I've got my two favorite paintbrushes in the hot wax um, that I like to use for filling in big spaces and for making little details like dots and designs. So let's get started. I work on campaign boards so this one's done now I'm gonna set it aside it's ready this is ready to go into the dye pot and I think I'm gonna use something super dark I've been really into dark plum purple um, or maybe I'll put it into a dark like a charcoal gray almost black or, or maybe eggplant um, but we'll see I want it to be dark because when I cover up this layer um, right now everything that's waxed is going to stay the color underneath it so these little designs are actually going to be lighter than the background they're going to be light blue this is um, a, a turquoise edging, edging into light blue uh, shape right there and then this is all filled in with light blue uh, blue and then green over here so basically wherever you put the wax it's going to protect the dye that's underneath it or the fabric that's underneath it so it's gonna have this white border around it but then actually the background the shirt itself and all of this all this fabric in here that does not have wax on it is gonna be that dark color so you sort of have to think in reverse um, that's really exciting to me um, Annie says she learned so much from me growing up. Did I know you growing up? Were you a kid that I taught? That's exciting. Cool. Hi, welcome. Um, we can keep learning together. It does not have to stop. So this is the goal for the waxing today. And yeah, Gwyn Valley. Woohoo! Gwyn Valley Camp, you guys. GwynValley.com did more for me than my master's degree. Sorry, Prescott College. But um, I learned more teaching at that camp than I did with the graduate degree that I'll be paying off for the rest of my life. So go summer camp. All right, here is the to-do list. One, two, three, four, five. And there's this little special pile of blank ones that I didn't do anything with. So um, hee hee, that's a project for next time. All right, so 
If the to-do list going out, did I say five? I said five. Randy, five, please. Okay, so behind me is hanging all the finished clothing, things that I have made to sell for wax on. It is all, almost all of it is now photographed and descriptioned and put up for sale on the Etsy store. So if there's anything you're like, ooh, what's that purple thing? Go look. Or you can just ask me here and I'll show it to you. We could do like a live shop. Oh, that's exciting. I want to do that. Holler if you want me to do that. Right now in my Etsy shop, I'm offering free shipping if you buy two or more things. And if you're a local to Asheville, you always get free shipping. Just use code LOCAL, L-O-C-A-L, in all caps, and you will um, not have to pay shipping. We'll just meet up in person. So, okay, I've got my shirt in front of me. What do I want to do first? Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint the border first. I really want to get this so you can see it. I'm going to, how do I cheat it out? This is awkward. I never batik like this, but we'll, we'll start this way. Okay, so I'm going to go up. Actually, this brush gets a little extra wax between the bristles and the metal part. And as I pull the strokes, it tends to do big fat drops. So we'll just do upward strokes. Oop, big fat drop. There we go. But I still love it. It holds so much wax and it goes for so long. Now, when I dip it down into the wax, I'm dipping it in um, a crock pot. I'll put it there so you can see it. The crock pot has a setting. Um, it's got low and high and warm. Warm isn't quite hot enough to get it to temperature, and low, to be honest, is a little too hot, which is why my wax is stinky. It's not hot enough to actually be um, at its flash point. It's not gonna cause um, fires to happen, but it is just like it's burning, it's cooking my wax too hot and it, it stinks. Instead of smelling warm, like when you use a beeswax candle, um, it actually just kinda stinks. So yeah, we would do this at camp, at Gwynn Valley Camp, and um, we were outdoors. We had this open air, like three sides open cabin on the top of a gorgeous mountain in the Blue Ridge, and we could just look out and watch the watch the nature occur. And we had fresh air all the time. Sorry about the voices in the background. I share my studio with twelve different artists, so there's some there's some men folk back there talking pretty loudly about who knows what. Um, so anyway, we're gonna paint the border here with the big fat brush and then we'll start working on filling in some of the detail inside. And I, I like doing big, uh, like unisex, gender-free t-shirts. At first I was thinking of them more as like, well this is sort of like for men because all my women's stuff is more fitted. But honestly, the people that I've been selling the oversized t-shirts too and long sleeve shirts have been more like um, really young people um, in like high school and early college who are wearing like super baggy on top and small on the bottom, which is the opposite of my high school days in the late 90s, like rave culture. We were like tiny, tiny on top and then giant jeans. Um, so it's kind of cool that, that now the market for these big shirts is more expansive than just men. Um, Okay, so I'm popping it off of the off the board here before I move on to the next part. I don't like to let the wax harden onto the campaign board because then it's too hard to pull everything off and you get these little crackles and you see how the dye has bled outside of the areas. That's from a crackle. Um, whenever the wax breaks, the, the dye can sneak through these tiny little crackles and you get these things, which is not... It's not perfect, but again, this art isn't about uh, perfection. Igor is here, my friend in Macedonia. Hi, love. Um, wow, it's so cool. Facebook Live is so cool that we have people from around the world watching. This is amazing. Um, what time is it in Macedonia, boo? Um, okay, so anyway, you want to wax it, and then you want to... I pull it off of the campaign board so it doesn't stick down. So now it's fun time. Fun time. Am I going to use those stamps again? I got to get out my example. Oh no, I just paint them in. Okay, cool. Let's do the center design first. So I got to find my tiny one. This is the tiny metal cookie cutter that I'm going to be using. And this is kind of where it gets, you got to trust yourself. I'm going to dip down into the hot wax and I'm going to try to get just the bottom of the metal cookie cutter into the hot wax. 
and get it heated up enough that it carries wax over, not so hot that it's burning my fingers to touch it, but not so cool that the wax doesn't penetrate through the fabric. So this is sort of, it takes a long time to get practiced enough at Batik that you feel good about handling the wax. So I'm just dipping into the crock pot right now. And when I start to feel warmth come tickling into my fingertips, then I hit it on the side and stamp. And yep, you can kind of tell immediately when it, when it goes through. It actually probably wasn't quite hot enough. The longer you work with it, the hotter it gets. Metal holds heat. And so at first you have to wait a while for it to get hot enough and then you're like, whoo, whoo, hot, hot, hot. So, you know, like in my descriptions a lot online, of course this is the day where everybody uses their loud machinery. Um, when I put things up on the Etsy store, I say like, even though it's the same design in multiple sizes, Everything looks a little bit differently because I'm doing each one by hand. So I can get my my previous one set up and look at it and kind of be like, oh, what did I do? Cool, I'll try to do that again. But I'm actually not super motivated to make them look identical. I, uh, I like this artistic process of everything's a little bit different. So now I'm going to take my little skinny brush and I'm going to start adding some of these drippy pulls to the inside. So, um, good question, Annie. You can't just use any kind of wax. So, just like in painting, there's a lot of different ways to paint. Um, acrylics handle differently than oils, handle differently than watercolors. Um, but it's generally accepted that like you need to use, there's a certain number of paints that work, quote unquote. Um, wax is the same way. Most batik artists that I know of, uh, who are doing this in sort of like the modern batik tradition with the materials that are available today are using a combination of beeswax and paraffin. There's also a, um, a synthetic beeswax called, um, I think it's called microcrystalline. It's like fake beeswax and it's a, beeswax is a sticky wax, right? So we've got the beeswax, which is sticky. We've got the paraffin, which is, it's um, a petroleum product and it breaks really easily. It crackles really easily. So when you use only paraffin, you get a ton of crackle, but it doesn't actually stick to the fabric very well. You can like peel it right off. When you use only beeswax, it's super sticky and it penetrates the material just fine, but it doesn't get a ton of crackle, or at least that's the going theory. So I blend my own. I actually use local beeswax from um, my friend James Clinkscales, who is a Oh, what's the word? It starts with an A, a somethingist, the real word for for beeswax, or for, for sorry, for beekeepers, you know what I mean? Um, love, love the background noises today. Um, anyway, so yeah, a, a blend of beeswax and paraffin is the short answer. Your mileage may vary. Bump up the, uh, the beeswax if you want less crackle. Bump up the paraffin if you want more crackle. I kind of keep mine at about 80-20 beeswax to paraffin, just for this this one mix. Um, but so here's another debate is soy wax. I'm gonna start making dots while we talk. Um, soy wax is new. Obviously it comes from soybeans and you guys can chime in if you know more about this than me, but um, soy is, I think that the only way to do, to get soy right now is that it's monocropped, right? So soy is sketchy for a couple reasons. Um, I don't eat it just because it doesn't digest very well in my body, but of course we're talking about non-edible soy, we're talking about soy wax. Um, but when I tell people I don't eat soy, they're always like, oh, because of the farming practices? I'm like, no, just because it makes me farty. But um, the, uh, the monocropping is a thing to think about um, for me. Also, when you boutique with soy wax, um, it, here's the good thing about boutiquing with soy wax. Let's start with a positive. It washes right out. It's amazing. It's septic safe. It's uh, You can wash it out in the washing machine with hot water. That saves so much time because you guys, I boil these in a pot of boiling water, old school traditional style. Um, 
I actually have a pot of hot water and I stir it with a wooden spoon and the wax rises up to the top of the surface and then I unplug the pot and I wait for it all to cool and then I can peel that wax mixture off the top of the pot and put it directly back into this crock pot. So it's completely a recycled loop. Um, hi, Jennifer and Angela are here, yay, artists who are dancers. Um, so anyway, I soy wax for me, it's cool that it washes out. And when I was teaching kids at camp, I, we used soy wax. Um, it smells kind of like hot donut oil when it's being heated up. So the kids like that. Um, but it's not my favorite. I don't like the look of it as much. And I, I could be corrected. Like I thought I didn't like ice dye when I first heard of ice dyeing. But the soy wax batik that I've seen just doesn't have that like traditional crackle that I love so much. I'm all about that crackle. Hashtag crackle life. Um, and I just love a apiarists. I love working with the apiarists. Thanks, Brain. Um, to really use real local beeswax to me is part of the charm of this process. So I don't want to use soy. I keep some soy wax flakes here in the studio, but um, you know, I got them when I started the business almost three years ago and I have not touched them. So that says a lot. So thanks, Annie. What a good question. Obviously I can talk a lot about wax choices, just like, you know, any visual artists would talk about their medium. Um, yeah, Angela says she always wondered how you got the wax off. There's a reason I did not name this company Wax Off. I have a love-hate relationship with getting the wax off of things. One thing that I have not yet figured out is how to reliably get the wax out of the dang polyester thread on the inside of these t-shirts, right? When I use... Okay, bye. When I use... Um, Organic cotton t-shirts from Spiritex, a local company, they have, um, they sew their garments together with cotton thread and wax, when it's boiled, releases from cotton beautifully. You will have these t-shirts where the, um, the material on the front of the shirt is just beautifully soft, restores right to its original feel. But if you have polyester thread inside of the garment, which 99% of the industry uses, Oh my God, it's stuck to everything. So I have to turn the shirts inside out and iron. I have to hand iron with a piece of brown paper every single seam to lift the wax up and out. Um, and that is just so much extra work for me. Now I've heard, I've ran this, cross, uh, this question across other boutique artists and I've heard that you can put something into the boiling water pot to help the wax come out of the polyester thread but everything that they've suggested, I've tried and have not had any different results. Then the wax is kind of icky on the top of the pot. Like if I'm using laundry detergent or Dawn soap or extra soda ash, it just kind of gets in there in the wax. And then for me, it's not as reusable. I'm so distracted by these loud men in the background right now. So I'm just gonna keep talking, but my, my ears are like, what are you talking about? Um, okay, so here's what I've done so far. I'm using my favorite paintbrush. It just has nice bristles and um, it's very smooth to paint in the inside of these things. This is really much more of a painting design that I've come up with than a stamping design. And that's okay. Um, so there's this delicate balance between pulling the paintbrush out still dripping because you I want it to hold as much wax as possible and then like tapping it off the edge here so that it doesn't like actually drip all over my fabric and I don't always get it right sometimes I, I end up with extra little drops like that one right there that was a oops but doesn't it look kind of cool and like this whole thing is gonna be not designs anyway so keep that in mind what we've got so far and then Check this out. This is where we're going. An extra dot is not going to hurt. So I, I dig it. I think it's totally fine. Um, and then what have we got in the corners there? We've got this guy. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the corner. So it's a little chilly in the studio today. Um, that's why I'm wearing this big sweater. So these stamps are actually cold to the touch when I pick them up because metal transmits heat and cold really easily. So I'm leaving it in here a little longer than I normally would. I don't feel the heat yet in my, in my fingertips. I'm starting to. 
Okay, now I'm gonna tap it off and I'm gonna press into the corners. Right there. Okay, ooh yeah, it's hot. It's still holding, still holding heat. So I'm gonna just get a little bit more wax. No need to hang out in the pot for much longer because it's already hot. Just gotta pick up the wax and I'm turning it so I can get each corner. These guys are never this chatty in the background. They hardly ever talk. Now they're chatting up a storm. Um, Murphy's Law of making live video. But let's embrace it. That's the good thing about having a shared studio, right? We are not um, locked away in our, in our towers. Um, we're in this together. So now I've got my four corners stamped and I'm gonna take my big fat paintbrush and I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna like color it in. And you know, I love this because this one now that's colored in with wax, it's protecting that fabric underneath it. It's, um, it's gonna be those colors. It's gonna be that blue fading to green, but it's gonna crackle because it's beeswax and paraffin mixed together. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> Angela's like, you could just match that dot over there. Totally, I probably will. Anyway, when that crackles, it's going to be this beautiful teardrop shape that is the color turquoise fading to green with crackles of the dark blue or dark you know, purple, whatever I'm gonna use, going through the little egg. So that's really exciting. Um, the more areas you can paint in with wax, the more you're gonna see that crackle. So I am gonna paint in these four. So I'll, I'll just embrace the background noise and talk a little bit about where I am. My studio is in a building called the Little River District Art Studios. And it's just one giant warehouse. It is super high ceiling, concrete floors, um, and there's no walls between any of our workspaces. So I'm up here in the front with this beautiful window, which is why you can see every pore on my face. Um, giant, giant windows in front of me. It's me, there's a stained glass artist next to me on that side. And to create a wall, I just use these rolling, um, garment racks. So um, when one of us is making really loud work, we all hear it. When one of us is doing something really stinky, we all smell it. Um, so it can be really cool. It's kind of like a family, but there's times like this when I'm uh, making a live video that you're like, oh, oh, it's loud conversation in the back day. Got it. Cool. All right. Time to do some drops. Let's see. I know that I'm going to do that thing Angela suggested where I just mirror image that dot, that looks cool. Let's see if I can do this with you guys seeing it. So in almost every video I've made so far, I've talked about one of my, one of my mentors in the field, Victoria, whose company is called Batik Walla. And she's got this really cool setup um, where she's able to batik comfortably in front of her, but it's set up so that the video can see it too. And I'm just wondering, should there be like a little Bob Ross situation going here where let's see we could do that it's just not great for for hot wax okay what did i do in the corners Ooh, three little dots i love dots so yeah we'll we'll paint like this so it's more fun for you to see here we go now remember i'm adding hot wax so right now it looks like i'm painting in dark but what I'm doing is preserving the dye color underneath it. Um, <laughs> thanks. Happy little dots. Um, I'm going to yes, try to control the hot wax so that it doesn't drip all over because I'm, I'm aimed up right now. And you know, Bob Ross, that was before the internet, that was before social media, and he somehow got a huge following just by letting people watch him paint. So I could do that. What if, what if I was the Bob Ross of fatigue. That would be really cool. Let's turn it around. Oh, favorite paintbrush. Where did you go? I don't know what I'm going to do when I lose this paintbrush. It has worked for so many years. It's just my go-to. We can talk about paintbrushes for a sec. Um, you can't, with batik and hot wax, you cannot use synthetic fibered paintbrushes. Why does this need to be natural fiber? Um, because you're going to be sticking it in the hot wax and the temperature is really high. It's going to melt things. So you really want to make sure that, um, 
so distracted. <laughs> uh, you really want to make sure that you're using natural fibers because otherwise when you put it in, it like melts and, and sort of like, oh, here's one. It's, let's see if you can see out. It's frayed at the top. The plastic started melting. Um, there's the thingy. Yeah. So this is no good. Also, you can't use ones that, um, that's all what I guess I threw them all out. If the body of the paintbrush is plastic, when you stick it in there, it's going to get heated up and it'll actually like melt and, and turn into a little plastic melty sea in the bottom of your thing. So natural, natural, natural is the way to go. The dye powders that I use, holy macaroni. I think I'm going to pause this video and come back to it later. Anyway, you've been watching Wax On Studio, hand paint some t-shirts, and I'm going to put my podcast back in. Okay, bye.